Geographic mobility is the measure of how populations and goods move over time. It is commonly used in demography and human geography. These moves can be as large a scale as international migrations or as small as regional commuting arrangement. Our world is getting smaller and smaller as we people deal with so much changes in terms of economics, government, and populations that brought each country into its development because of globalization. Talking about globalization, it has so much topics to deal with. One of, its, one of it is the global population and mobility, such as global city, global demography, and global migration. One is a global city. It is very important because it talks about importance in the operation of global systems in terms of trade and finance, which made some countries as developed as first world, as first world country. The first world countries are allow called mega cities, which covers large area of geograph, geography and more than 10 million in populations like Japan, USA, China. These are countries that belong into the mega city because of their economic stability and advancement of technology. The next one is the global demography, which focuses on the population. In this time, lifespan gradually because becomes in a short leave of time. In the Philippines, the government proposed a Philippine bill to protect and to set its family planning at least to help to increase of population here in, a, in our country. The last one is the global migration. Global migration, some people tend to migrate because of some factors such as employment. Like many P Filipinos tend to stay in other places around the world for them to settle th themselves in a stable, stable and convenient way of living. Uh, these, three, three, these are the issues that need to be discussed in our nation. Global population and mobility. It is a geographic mobility which measure of how population and goods move over time. It is a percentage of globally population with a volume of movement in a large scale. To understand, global population is the total number of people globally who are currently living here on Earth. It gives data and information to identify the growth of the particular country. Mobility, on the other hand, it is where people are allowed to move freely and has the occurrence of movement or change in place or even residency. So what is the connection of global population to mobility? So the connection between global population and mobility is that people tend to relocate themselves in which they can find opportunity to have a good source of income. Sometimes others live with their spouse. They get the chance of applying and building business outside their base. That's why the mobility results to have this global population. Global City Global City is an urban center that serves and have within a globalized economic system. The term has its origin in research on cities carried out during 1980s, which examined the common characteristic of the world most important cities. It is also called a power city, world city, alpha city, or world center. It is a which uh, is a primary road in a global economic network. This concept comes from geography and urban studies. And the idea that globalized is created and furthered a strategic geography locals according to a hierarchy of importance to the operation of the global system of finance and trade. The most complex of these entities is the global city, whereby the linkage bending assembly have a direct and tangible effect on global affairs through socio-economic means. Global cities have been linked with two globalizations related trends. First is the expansion of the role of traditional corporations in the global production patterns. And the second one is declining the mass production along forest lines and the concomitant rise 
flexible production center with urban areas. These two trends explain the emergence of network of certain cities serving the financial and service requirements of the TNCs, while other cities suffer the consequences of the industrialization and fail to become global. Global cities are those that therefore become effects command and coordination parts for TNCs with a globalizing world economy. Global cities plays an increasingly important role at the global and regional level, from Asia to Africa, from South and North Africa to Europe. Large urban centers enjoy significant competitive advantages and serves in the primary modes in the globalized economic system. They interact with states and other information with global economic agendas and are crucial to questions related to climate change, mobility, and migration, technological innovation, economic development, and infrastructure. At the same time, global cities dramatically display the challenges posed by social inequalities and exclusion. Global city is good for the movement of global economy. But looking on the other hand, global city also brings its, its effects. Poor air and water quality, insufficient water availability, wasted disposal problems, and high energy consumption are exacerbated by the increasing population density and demands of our urban environments. But on the other side, strong city planning will be recent essentials in managing this and other difficult as the words urban areas swell. These are the example of global city with their contribution. Very light contribution, London and New York City, smaller contribution with cultural bias, Los Angeles, Paris, and San Francisco. There are also incipient global cities, Amsterdam, Boston, Chicago, Madrid, Milan, Macau, and Toronto. Global demography. When we are talking about global demography, it is a study of human population, their size, composition, and distribution across space, and the process through which population change. The rapid increase in the global population over the past decades has resulted in large number of people of childbearing age. This creates population momentum in which the population of most countries, even those with family birth rates, will grow for many years to come. This is particularly true of developing countries. Population change have potentially huge implication for the peace and progress of economic development. For example, an increasing proportion of elderly may act as a drag on economic growth where smaller working population must provide for a larger number of non-working dependents. Rising life expectancy can also bolster an economic by creating a, great, a greater incentive to save and to invest in education, thereby boosting the financial capital on which investors draw and the human capital that strength ec economies. Where a country has experienced a baby bomb followed by a decline in fertility. The relative size of the workforce is increased. Countries that are able to absorb the, the baby bomb generation into productive employment can experience a rapid increase in economic growth. Countries unable to take advantage of this opportunity run the risk of creating large, chronically unemployed and increasing risky working age population. For much of human history, demographic patterns were sonably stable. Human populations grew slowly and the age structures, growth rates and death rates of population changed only gradually. Epidemics and pandemics had huge effects on populations. But these effects were short-lived and had little bearing on long-term trends in the past 50 years. However, this trend of long-term stability has given way to the biggest demographic upheaval in history, an upheaval that is still running its course. In the developed world, a sharp post-war rise in fertility was followed by an equal sharp fall. These changes in fertility transformed age structures through creation of a baby boom generation. The aging of this generation and continued declines in fertility and old age mortality 
are shifting the population balance in developed countries from young to old. In the meantime, the developing world has experienced a population explosion. The result of improved nutrition, public health infrastructure, and medical care. Even if high fertility, the main underlying cause of rapid population growth, were to suddenly adjust the long-run replacement level of 2.1 children per woman, humanity would continue to experience demographic change for some time. Global Migration What is global migration? A situation in which people go to live in foreign countries, especially in order to find work. Most global migration is from developing countries to developed ones. However, the reasons why people migrate differ depending on an individual situation. Migration is a powerful migrants themselves with significant opportunities to progress. It is also a factor that has diverse developmental effects on both the home and countries. How migration related to global population and mobility? Migration related to global population because the population of the country will be affected based on the people that migrate to the other country. Example, when the people in the barangay will migrate, then the population of the Philippines will decrease and also it is related to the mobility in the way that people can move freely or migrate when they want. But in some cases, global population can affect as a whole to the global migration. Who can benefit in global migration? The reality is that migration brings huge benefits, fueling growth, innovation, and entrepreneurship. In both the countries, people come from and in those they move to. When governed humanly to promote safety, order, and dignity, migration has endless advantages. It provides opportunities and raises incomes and living standards. These benefits are important to keep in the mind because in Europe, we're more, not less. Migration will probably be needed in the future. Europe's population is aging and the EU is predicting a massive shortage of workers of 45 million in the next 50 years as the working age population will, will drop. With no further migration to the EU, the population of the EU 27 will be 58 million less than it was in 2010, according to Eurostat data. Contrary to public perceptions that European countries do not need migrants, the reality is that migrants mitigate the effects of aging and shrinking population and will be the key in the sustainability of the dependency rates. Is migration good for our country? Migration is good to our country especially in the economic growth, it boosts the working age population. Migrants arrive with skills and contribute to human capital development of receiving countries. Migrants also contribute to technological progress. Understanding these impacts is important if our societies are to usefully debate the role of migration. Importance of global migration. Migration is important for the transfer of manpower and skills and provides the needed knowledge and innovation for global growth. In order to address the issues raised by global migration, it is necessary to improve the international coordination. Migration helps in improving the quality of life of people. It helps to improve social life of people as they learn about the new culture, customs, and languages which helps to improve brotherhood among people. Migration of skilled workers led to a greater economic growth of the region. Effect of migration The dynamic effects of migration are mostly positive. Macro and micro level studies suggest that migration might stimulate human capital formation to the ex extent that the brain gain offsets the brain drain. This is true even for health professionals' migration. Why do people move or migrate? People move in some reason like poverty, a lack of responsibility to their relatives, lack of services, lack of employment, lack of education, etc. They have to migrate to meet the needs of their families. Even they are not educated, as long as you have experience and also know how to write and read, 
and you have language skills, they can go abroad or migrate to the other country. Advantages and disadvantages of migration. Advantages. A richer and more diverse culture helps to reduce any labor shortages. Migrants are more prepared to take on low-paid, low-skilled jobs. Disadvantages. Increasing cost of services such as health care. A lot of people today go to other country to get a job or making a business. Sometimes we can say that if there's a lot of people in our society, we can make our economy better. We can produce a lot of jobs and we can help a lot of people to sustain their daily needs. Global population also have a negative impact in our society. If people don't have a family planning, a lot of people will suffer poverty because they can get a nice job because they don't have a proper education to get a higher salary. Global population and mobility help us to understand what is happening in our economy and also to the world. This also helps us to be competitive enough in terms of by creating jobs and building new infrastructures to help a lot of people to get a job.